from the roundtable at Uncle Studios in beautiful Southern California. Welcome to another edition of Workout Matters, the central location for you employees, you employers, and of course, we haven't forgotten about you independent contractors, damn it. My name is Steve Appel, and I'll be your host for the next hour with some talk, some news, hopefully some answers about Work Comp Matters. Thanks for being part of the show, and if you can break away from your Work Comp Matters, feel free to give me a call and clue us in with your questions, comments, and or concerns. The phone number worldwide, 818-357-4120. You can send me an email to wcexaminer at aol.com. You can be old school. Send a fax, 818 475 one four three seven with me in studio, my right hand man, Dr. Mike Zima, the best dressed man, Mr. Ted Durden, my protege, attorney Robert Ozeron, engineer Scott Walton of Uncle's Studio, back in Munich, Germany, attorney John Scalia, and back at WorkComp Central, making sure the whole damn thing goes right is Jake Paris. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of WorkComp Matters. We're brought to you by A1 Law, Santa Monica Tickets, and of course, ABC rugs well tonight's show who do you trust and i am here to tell you you can trust me about a year and a half ago i had a handshake agreement with WorkComp central nothing in writing it actually wasn't even really a handshake agreement it it was a telephone an email agreement that I will do 52 shows in 52 weeks. These are not webinars, folks. These are radio talk show podcasts. And I was about 26 shows in, and we did the live broadcast at the Van Nuys WCAB, which turned out to be one of the crappiest shows we ever did. I actually lost money on it, and I was thinking to myself, I never want to do this again but I fulfilled my agreement. I did the 52 shows. Lo and behold, we got renewed for another year. And here we are again, another year. We're about 90 shows in for a year and a half. And the one thing that you can trust is that I do what I say, I say what I do, and I am here week in and week out. No, I'm not making a lot of money. I'm just not losing money. And I've been asked, you know, why do I do this? Uh, you know, why, why put in my time if I'm not making money? Well, first, of course, I've said many times before, <clears throat> I have the opportunity, however small, to make a million dollars. If someone hears us, tweets us out, we go viral, forget it. Uh, we, we are all going out. Uh, and we're going out on the radio or doing whatever. But right now, we just just do this little podcast, this little Work Comp Matters thing at Uncle's Studio around the round table. I've assembled one of the best crews in Southern California. I've known Mike for over 20 years. I've known Ted for over 20 years. I've known Robert since he was a little puppy coming into my office requesting a little bit of water and some kibble. I've known Scott for like about two and a half years, and we are all on handshake agreements. And of course, that brings us to the Senate hearings with regards to Judge K, Judge Kavanaugh. And I kept an open mind at first. I said, I don't know. I'm going to keep an open mind. And I heard Dr. Ford testify and I said, although Robert has, has been publicly on Facebook, he listed 23 reasons why her testimony is not credible. And I'll let him get into that in a couple of minutes. To me, her testimony was 100% credible. And I said before she testified, why would she put herself through this just like Anita Hill? I'm almost positive that she was attacked. Whether or not it was Kavanaugh, I don't know. But the changing time, the changing point for not for me was not after she testified, but it was after Kavanaugh testified. And I went back and I listened to the Clarence Thomas testimony. And that's on YouTube from 1991. And you, you want to know what the difference is between the Clarence Thomas testimony and the Judge K testimony, they both said essentially the same thing. This whole process 
is destroying the country. This whole process is embarrassing for Congress. This whole process has changed, uh, uh, pardon me, this whole process uh, has lessened the credibility of the Supreme Court justice as well as Congress. But the one thing that I noticed, Clarence Thomas said it all in a professional and a low-key and an even vocal manner. Kavanaugh, and I don't know if any of you saw the uh, Matt Damon parody on uh, Saturday Night Live, uh, Kavanaugh was animated. Kavanaugh was drinking water like it was going out of style. Kavanaugh had the nervous tics. He had the thumb, uh, uh, pardon me, not the thumb. He had the tongue going cheek to cheek. And I got to tell you, based on Kavanaugh's testimony only, I can't trust the guy. I mean, he was talking about the four Fs, meaning flagellants, okay? Give me an effing break! I know what the four Fs are. The four Fs are find them, feed them, F them, and forget them. This is no drinking game, folks. Then he talked about the Tevil's Triangle. Give me a break! That ain't no drinking game, okay? That's a threesome with two guys and basically an intoxicated woman, okay? Forget about what Dr. Ford said, which, by the way, um, except for identifying him. No, you you know what? Actually, I'm going to say it right now. I believed everything she said. I believed everything that she said. But that was not my determining factor. My determining factor was Kavanaugh's credibility. And in my mind, he doesn't have any. And he's certainly not someone that I would want to put on the Supreme Court. I mean, you talk about uh, uh, ability to react calmly under stress. Just don't think he has it. Well, you know, I have to say, though, that the allegations against Kavanaugh were much more serious than the allegations against Clarence, Clarence Thomas. That's because they were physical. And yeah, that's right. Because and there and were I can witnesses. understand I can understand Kavanaugh getting really crazy in his demeanor. But I'd like to ask Robert, <clears throat> Robert, let's say. And I got to give Robert props because the during the entire time I've been talking He's been quiet. He's been really respectful. And I uh, got to give Robert props for that, even though I know I'm totally going to disagree. Well, there were a few guffaws, says. though. I noticed a guffaw. Well, well, well yeah, everyone's entitled to her opinion. I was interested in hearing your guys' opinion before I shared my own. Well, I can, I, can I ask you something, next, Robert, though, uh, if I may? Yeah. If I may. Oh, okay, the, the four right Fs, here. okay. Um, when Kavanaugh testified about the four Fs, it was in response, of course, to a question. I believe the four Fs were a notation in his high school yearbook, right? And Ka- and Kavanaugh testified that the four Fs had to do with flatulence. Okay, Robert, assuming arguendo that the four Fs had nothing to do with flatulence and are a reference, as Steve has suggested, is that not lying to the committee? Well... I don't know if it is or is not a lie. I can't tell you that. If you're saying if they mean something that's the exact opposite as he testified, then it would be a lie. Then yes, he'd be lying. But I mean, he said it's not. I think he also said that one of them is like a, a buildup and saying the F word, right? Uh, for one of those kids. Listen, that was not the reason for the hearing. The hearing was based on Dr. Ford's uh, allegations of a, a, a single sexual assault incident in high school. The rest of this character attack, this is exactly the uh, misleading approach that they want to that they want to impose upon you, that they want you to believe. They want you to buy this. Okay. Now it's we're not just talking about this one incident. Now he's a drunk who assaults women all the time, right? Because if he's a drunk, then it's more likely that he assaults women, and then it's more likely that he did this assault. It's this character attack that if you did this in court you can never bring it up well yeah but, what, but robert what, what 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 if he in fact lied about that the 4f uh annotation what if the 4f has a meaning like steve suggested well i think what mike is really asking and correct me if i'm wrong is it okay to lie to congress about 
anything. Or right. if you lie, does it depend on the lie? Lying is an absolute term when you use it this way. So it's very difficult to, to answer your question because it's a loaded question. If you're going to say if he lied, okay, that's a factual absolute, then yes, it's illegal to lie under oath, of course. But the question is, what is a lie? That's the real question. Not is lying wrong under oath. That's an absolute question that has an easy answer. So the question for you is, what, is it interpretation? It, could he remember it a different way? Could one witness be wrong? Could one witness be politically motivated to give a false statement? Well, he you seemed know? pretty clear that the four Fs had to do with a buddy of his who had flagellants. And I'm talking and he specifically seemed, about he that. Seemed pretty, he seemed pretty clear that uh, the term devil's triangle uh, had to be a drinking game and not what I referred it to. There, there didn't appear to be any ambiguity. But I wanted to correct one thing you said, Robert. In my opinion, this hearing, or these five days of hearing, are not about whether or not he did it, but essentially... It is a job interview. Thank you. No, and it's I, an inquisition into this no, man's no, life. No, Call no, it what no, it is. No. Okay? It is a job no. interview to determine if he has the character, the, the character, the temerity, uh, the temerity, uh, as well as the confidence to uh, perform I, I the ag- job. I can't disagree properly. more. Firstly, right okay. now, Judge Kavanaugh is the uh, arguably the highest judge on the second highest court in the land currently. Correct. Yes, yes, but that, okay. so, that's so, relevant. Wait, 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 hold on. Let me hold just, on. Okay. So clearly he served in that capacity for more than a decade, uh, and he's one of the highest rated judges by the ABA. He graduated top of his class, Yale Law School, Yale undergrad, and currently, as we sit here today with a deadlock on a Supreme Court that can't take session, he is the top judge in the country. But, so but, I don't understand the purpose of this. This is an inquisition into this man's life. These are all character attacks trying to really just slander well, well, this well, good man. Well, he, he we made, should talk he, about the one incident and bring it to the facts. I'm and if you talking, do that, I'm it's going to be over. But I'm not talking about the one incident. I'm talking about whether or not he has credibility and he's it's, believable. It's about, look, it's about the character of the man. That's what it's about. I the, totally the, the, agree with the that. The person that sits on that Supreme Court should be one that's damn near above reproach. Pure and simple. You want to talk about his character, how he was rated at the board and at the appellate court that he's on? I can't recall the gentleman's name who had to retire because he was sexually harassing a lot of his clerks. Okay, he, but they, we have none of that here. These are, no, these no, are but all no, ad hominem no, attacks. But, no, okay? but, no, but what I'm talking about is this, Robert, and I agree with Steve. It is about character. It's almost like the Mueller investigation. The Mueller investigation started out, started out with looking about as far as Russia's influence upon the elections. That's what it started out as. However, it meandered into other things, and look at all the indictments that he's gotten as a result of that. So granted, Kavanaugh might have started with the sexual assault allegation, but now it has meandered and expanded into the issue of his credibility. Yeah, into a fishing it, expedition. No, into his it's whole not life. about a fishing expedition because it's it's no when you are that type of public figure, you are going to be subject to scrutiny. When you step into that when you step into the hallow hall, when you step before the Senate Judiciary Committee, you have to be prepared to answer whatever question they set forth. I told, it's no, it's, it's I no different. I understand what you're saying. No, but, but again. But I, I got to say I disagree. Because okay, that so is, what that you're is saying asking, is okay. he shouldn't have integrity? Well, listen, if you ask any person, what's the most deviant thing you've ever done in your life? Okay, you have, you're telling me that not a single individual other there, right there on a the Supreme Court, that if you were asking them that, they would say, well, I actually one time used the bathroom in public. I guess that's illegal, you know, right? You, these are not the issues at hand. This man has served dutifully for, for more than a decade, okay? So, and his decisions have been great for, for, from every side, fair and great for but every side. But you would agree that if it was proven, if it was found that he lied not only once, but multiple times before Congress, then he shouldn't be confirmed. Is right. that correct? Uh, no, I, I, honestly, I don't know. It depends what the lie so is. Another, but yes, if it's oh, a large well, lie, the then obviously Fs. it'd be perjury. Take the four did, Fs. Did you all just hear that? Listen, the four Fs, could one person... Con- what's a lie? If the other person says it, says what you mean. Yeah, but you just, it said, you you just said it depends on the lie. No, what I, well, that's exactly because you're going to say it's a lie and he can say, no, he's misremembering it. Then what? Is it a lie or not a lie? You're in an absolute world and that's just not possible in the, t- in the oh. terms that you're... In the subject matter that you're talking about. I, so if you want to say it's disagree. a lie, I boom, that's an absolute, then okay, then it's perjury. I couldn't disagree with you more. Look at Jeff Sessions. Jeff Sessions had to recuse himself because when he testified before Congress... 
He lied about his being present at a meeting. He was there. And as soon as that as soon okay, as that came to lie, you know, but again, but the way he characterized it, I didn't recall that. But when it was brought to his attention and he remembered, he said, OK, I need to recuse myself. Look at Michael Flynn. Michael Flynn was supposed to be appointed. He found out they found out he lied. What happened with him? He got fired. But, OK, this is about the presence of a meeting with Jeff Sessions versus a potential uh, interpretation of a yearbook uh, uh, note. This no. is these are apples and oranges. No. That's why this is all meant to mislead uh, what I call the sheeple, okay? The sheep. Okay. I'm sorry. We're off topic. We're into inquisition in this man's life. If we want to find fault in any individual on this earth, I guarantee you we can, okay? That's a fact of, of I'm, being I'm gonna human. I'm going to tell you guys, bear with me for a second. I'm going to tell you a pea story. There was a friend of mine, married a woman, beautiful woman, sexy woman, could not cook worth a damn. Not at all. The only thing that she could cook decently was little green peas. So guess what happened? Every dinner, she made him little green peas. As a dutiful husband, he ate those little green peas. One day for his birthday, she decided to throw him a surprise birthday party. They decided to have it at a girlfriend's house. Oh, make my husband little green peas. He loves those girl. So she made them. He got there, saw it. What did he say? Oh my God, I hate these little green peas. His wife looked at him in horror. And ran out of the room crying when he confronted her later, not confronting when he spoke to her later. You know what she said? If you lie to me about the little green peas, something so small and so something so insignificant, what else have you lied to me about? At the end of the day, I don't care how you paint it. It comes down to integrity. It comes down to character. If you are going to sit in those hallowed halls at the Supreme Court, you need to have that. So if, again, if you are not going to be honest about the little things, then how can we count on you about the bigger things? And let, and and let, me, and let, me, and let me add to that, okay? I said earlier, I believe everything that Ford said. But even if Kavanaugh did not attack her, I'm going to put that aside. In watching his performance, and believe me, folks, it was a performance that did not instill the trust that I want in a Supreme Court justice. Okay. Let me say, boss, that uh, it seems that you guys have decided that Kavanaugh is lying. That is I have dangerous. decided he's uh, not credible. Yeah. But for some reason, and I know, and I got to say, you've been drinking the punch, boss. Okay. You believe Dr. Ford, even though her own best friend from high school doesn't recall the incident. So somehow you have a better insight into this incident and clearly than her you own did high school not best friend. hear what I said 45 seconds ago. Uh, you want to believe, boss. You're, you're, uh, uh, you want to believe, and I and I and I appreciate that. And you want to help the victims because well, you're a you sensitive guy. You want to believe Kavanaugh, so no, I want to follow the facts. Uh, I don't care either way. I have no uh, skin in the game. I'm not even political. I didn't vote for Trump, right? Even though now I'm supportive of the economy generally. You know, I'm I don't care personally, but I know how to tell when a witness isn't being credible, right? Uh, much less the fact that her own support witnesses deny it. That doesn't hurt. But, you know, she just took you guys all for a big con job, in my opinion. So and I'll explain we, why. Okay, how was she not okay. credible? Right, okay, let's, you want, let's go with the big flags. Should we go with the big flags or the small ones? Yes. Robert, okay. Robert's got 23 oh reasons my gosh. why she's not credible. And if you guys take the blinders off for two seconds, uh, you guys will see it. Okay. So we'll start with the big flags. Firstly, uh, her so-called claim for privacy, right? She wanted privacy. What type of person will go out there and expose themselves to this type of harassment? Except for the fact that, you know, she declined all private interview attempts and she only made her avail herself available one time. And that happened to be on live national TV in Washington. There's nothing who, there's no one who values their privacy more than declines private interviews and likes to make, the, that's taking you for a ride, obviously, because they want to be center stage and they got it, okay? There does, there's no other explanation for my demand for privacy simultaneous with my demand to make my own, myself available well, only. Well, she says she wanted privacy and she insisted on it until it got leaked. Her oh, name got leaked. Yeah, and then you know what? I decided to just put myself right in Washington, right in the middle of everything. You know what? That makes yeah, sense. Yeah, that Robert, makes total sense. Yeah. Robert, once Shall we continue? But once once her name got leaked, she's going to be subject to scrutiny and ridicule anyway. You, so you don't the, think there's the, a difference between no, no, let, your let name being leaked and being in the front of the, the entire world? Let me tell you something. I'm going to speak a little bit from personal experience. I had a sister that was raped at 16 years old. She never reported it to anybody. It never got out to anybody. 
because there's a certain amount of shame that's associated with that. Yes, most rapes okay. are not reported. Okay, and she and and to add insult to injury, she got pregnant and had to have an abortion as a result of it. She had to do that. So again, so but again, once her name got out there, once become publicly known, you don't think that that the news reporters would have hounded her down. TMZ would have hounded her down. NBC, CBS, CNN. Well, they, they would have done. They would have done everything that they could have. They were about to. No, they no. were absolutely. Okay. She could have done a private interview. She declined the private interview attempts for the Senate to come to her. She put herself in front of the world. Uh, that is not something psychologically consistent with someone who claims privacy. Well, I am sorry. Was that before or after her name got leaked? It was during. During they, you heard Grassley uh, say that he. Uh, was offering it multiple times. Okay, that is not psychologically consistent. And let me tell you how this is misleading. And this is how it's so easy to mislead. You're going to mislead 50% of the people based on political goggles. You're going to mislead another 50% of the people based on their gender. You're going to you're going to mislead a maybe a quarter or 10% to people who have personal experience with this subject matter and make them sensitive. Uh, and, and I'm looking around the table here. So this is such an easy topic to mislead people on. And if you looked at the facts, just the hard facts, you'd see such psychological inconsistency that's that it would be impossible to hold these beliefs any further. She doesn't remember where no. the party is. She doesn't remember how she got there. Oh, she no. doesn't remember Let's how she going. got home. Let's but, keep but, going. But I, I want to ask Robert one question, though. Okay, yeah, you're right. Grassley did offer to interview her in private. Now, <laughs> we're all men of a certain age. How many times have someone been interviewed in private and then one person's portrayal of what occurred in private or what was said in private is mischaracterized. Okay. Okay. Well, but no, but let me finish, Robert, because that, because you have to remember when the allegations first surfaced, nobody believed her. Nobody believed that this actually happened. I mean, the way it was, it was handled horribly. And I agree with you on that. It was handled horribly. But the first thing that was done, she was challenged by the Republicans on the Judiciary Committee to come forward. We don't believe this. Where is this one? Where is she at? Ted, Why was she talked to Ted, us? I have nearly 20 plus reasons of okay. why this, should, this is psychologically consistent. Mm -hmm. Any individual reason, mm -hmm. you can always debate and you can start to say, well, maybe I could explain it away. I think we've all been in a bad relationship where we explained things away where we looked away from flags. What's okay? the next major one? Okay. The next major one is when she, uh, well, you want factual? Let's do psychological. Okay. Uh, firstly, she's wearing a disguise. Her hair is in front of her face. She's wearing thick glasses that are smudged. Okay, she is. That is a physical or psychological barrier that people put on when they're not telling the truth. That is a sign of deception. Just, just one, and in itself, not uh, dispositive. You know, not dispositive. Just one. Two. You're saying her hairstyle was not consistent with yes. the way. Really, Robert yes. has 23 documented reasons okay, why her testimony continue. is false. And, I and I you know what? None of that matters to me. I know he's got the blinders I, because I made my decision after listening to Kavanaugh. And I found him not to okay, be but we're someone talking about the assault. that I wanted. No, I'm talking about a job interview, whether or not I want him as my employee on the Supreme well, then Court. Then let's go and back to is, Ford's testimony just because it's interesting. Let's go to okay. Kavanaugh's testimony. Well, well, I, I noticed, Kavanaugh's I noticed, testimony is straightforward. Well, I don't think so, Robert. Well, can I, 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 can I just clarify no, something? No, no, hold on let's a, do the, let's no, do the no, other no, psychological no, no. factors. I, I don't hold understand. on a second. Uh, you want to talk about psychological factors? And obviously mm. you've done your homework. Let's talk about Kavanaugh's testimony. Okay? We will. Let's, let's bifurcate this. He was sweating. <laughs> he was drinking water like it was going out of style. Yeah. He had nervous tics. He had the facial expressions. He was yelling. He was totally uncomposed. Was combative. And he was combative and totally stressed. Is this someone I want on my Supreme Court? Regardless of whether or not he did it, my answer is no. Okay, I, I now, got now, that. Now, when we can talk to, about Kavanaugh, no, I believe he, saw, he showed like signs of minimization talk. and deflection. That's, and, and, that's and how that's I would psychologically classify another, because it. Because I remember when you and I come, right. when, when you and I originally communicated, I think I, I said, do you think that he's lying or misrepresenting the truth? Your response to me was, well, maybe he's minimizing his Minimalization testimony. and deflection were his psychological defenses. Well, that's not honest, Robert. It might not be lying, but it certainly but it was, isn't honest. But it was regarding a uh, uh, collateral matter, like drinking, it which is only matter, a character but, attack but to try Robert, to, make it, to sully him, one, to try to make one him believe lie, he committed the assault. Robert, you know the, jury, you know the jury instructions. If you choose to disbelieve one thing, you can choose to believe everything. No, this is an off-topic thing. Everything. You're going to believe an 
an assault because it's he minimizes not drinking in college? That's not, that's not responsible. For, you know, Robert, logic. to me, the issue is not whether or not he attacked the woman. It's whether or not okay. I want him on the Supreme Well, I know Court. Mike wants to know, so let's keep going I, with the psych I, factors. Well, you know what? I just want to clarify, okay? And I know you got 23 of them. I'm going to go smoke a cigarette <laughs> and let you guys talk for five I got more than 23. Are, are you, okay, are you saying that... Her hairdo was different? Yes. No, not yes, her hairdo he was did different. say that. Well, boss, could I explain? I did not say her hairdo was different. He said it okay. was a disguise. It was, it was meant as a barrier psychologically between the questions and the answers. People put things on their face okay. like glass. It's like a poker game. Okay. But let me ask you this, and if you noticed, did any, of you gentlemen, did any of you gentlemen notice that her hair was messy and not kempt, not, not properly yes. groomed? Now, does that strike you as peculiar? Does any woman, put it this way, gentlemen, any woman that you know any listener there at home, any psychologically healthy woman you know who's going to be on national TV doesn't do her hair perfect, there isn't one. Okay? All of you at home know this. I know this. Okay? This is a factor that goes with deception, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Come on, Robert. No, wait a minute. First of all, you're talking about a woman who is talking about something, a sexual assault that has adversely affected her over a period of 36 years, about to testify before this Judiciary Committee on the world stage. And she do doesn't know, do her hair. Well, no, Isn't that no, weird? No, no, no. no but, but here's the point that you're missing, and I'm just amazed at this. She was a nervous wreck because she didn't want to do it. Oh, but yeah. She, came, but she, she didn't want to do it, then she, she declined she, the private interviews, right? But, but she right? came for it anyway. No, she declined no, no. the private interview. She, she declined the private interview, stage. in my opinion, because she wanted to make sure that her truth came out and not somebody else's version of her truth. Uh, okay, but then she doesn't groom herself properly. That makes no sense, okay? Look, These if are I, psychological look, factors. If I'm, With look, all red psych reports, how mm-hmm. they present themselves is a very uh, strong indicator of psychological I, I dysfunction. What, I tell you what, the next time you get to get ready to be put before a firing squad, make sure you look your best. Okay, she voluntarily put herself there, ladies and gentlemen. This is the psychological inconsistencies that I'm talking about. You know, I'm, I'm no let me, expert let me do another on, big one, on women's hair, but I thought that her hair was groomed and just part of it was in front of her face, but I thought it was styled. It looked messy to me. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah, okay. Uh, listen, absent this hearing, you would acknowledge that usually a barrier in someone front in front of somebody's face, if you have any psych background, is an indicator of deception. Some sort of glasses or any other barriers. When I play poker, I have my Dodgers hat and I pull the Correct. bowl wide right over Correct. the top so they can't see Poker's my eyes. Poker is a very easy way to I show it. I do not want to wear sunglasses during Correct. poker. Correct. And here she is wearing these thick glasses that are smudgy, and her hair is in front of her face. She I didn't notice smudgy. Well, I didn't I noticed. notice there was schmutz yeah. in the. And did you notice that they're bigger and thicker than the photos that were previously circulating. I didn't. Are you oh. saying she had different glasses? It's a, it's, it's a disguise in a sort of way. Not a full disguise. It's a psychological Are disguise. You saying, I think it's a shield. Okay. I, don't, I think yeah. it's a shield. Correct. Correct. I, and, and, yeah, okay. it's a shield. And but one I'm, thing, you can explain it away. Mm-hmm. But watch. Let's keep going. Go ahead. She described... She, uh, He's used, got 23 of them. Oh my gosh. They're so bad, ladies and gentlemen. I know I do this for a living. I get it, right? And I was a professional poker player for a while. My bachelor's is in psych, in deviant psychology, nonetheless less right my parents are both psychological doctors so perhaps i am uh, attuned to this but uh it was so bad it, and by the way i watched uh with a judge i'm not going to mention which judge and i can't you were say watching this, the that, hearings with a judge i had it on my pa- ipad pro uh and i was in the court oh and i, and I, I actually I you were, you were watching actually, it in the courtroom oh got yeah it, got in you. the hallway got and it. i you know i talked to the judges and i mm-hmm. actually know how the judges feel about this one generally mm-hmm. a lot mm-hmm. of the judges okay mm-hmm. and i know that they may see it my way. I don't want to speak for all of them. Okay, say another to. major one. Okay. So she used expert terms unnecessarily, right? Her hippocampus, right, ladies and gentlemen? First yes. of all, if you Googled that term after she said it, it was like photos of her started popping up, okay? Now, in, when you're buying a car, you know that when the expert th- terms start getting thrown around, that's usually a sign of deception where you have to put your guard up, right? When people start using scientific terms unnecessarily. Well, I know when I ask someone like you a question and you don't answer it and... and, and it's uh, a sign it, of BS, correct. Right, exactly. It's a sign of BS. Go ahead. Now, you deflect uh, to something correct. else. Go ahead. Now, fine. Okay, and I, I, I confronted you with this, boss, and you told me, as many people have, well, she's a doctor. She just falls back to her training. Yes, I, I said, did tell you you're that. You're right. But then she uses the, the the claustrophobia issue haphazardly. Specify. She her uh, believe Diane Feinstein was like, well, because you're claustrophobic, you need the two hands. Yes, I'm claustrophobic. In the meantime, you rode an air, you flew an airplane there. If you notice, people are crowding all around her. That lady is not claustrophobic. Okay, that is a fact. I thought so, it was fear of flying. 
was like, I didn't hear claustrophobic. Uh, no. that, that was also something. She admitted so to being it? claustrophobic. She so, said she had fear of flying, but she flew all around the, the world. world. And to... she's also claustrophobic. She admitted. So, by the way, she's now using expert terms to explain why she can't remember something in one hand. But in the other hand, she's using expert terms haphazardly to not diagnose herself, even though she is. She's self-diagnosing herself. It's not an official diagnosis. So here you are interchanging your expert hat when it suits you. That's very. That's a flag. Okay, uh, and she. By the way, she. Uh, she also attributed the uh, claustrophobia to the assault. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if this claustrophobia doesn't exist, then maybe the assault doesn't exist. In the meantime, you have people h- hounding all over her shoulders, and she's smiling and laughing. She is right. not claustrophobic. So that is even, a fact. Okay? Even if he didn't attack her. I still stand that his performance did uh, okay, not. Okay, we'll ask. talk about his. We'll, well talk. About, talk I, have, about. I have another one. Um, we will talk about that, but we are way overdue for a break. My name is Steve Appel. You're listening to WorkCom Matters. We're brought to you by A1 Law, Santa Monica Tickets, and of course ABC Rugs. Uh, another valuable contributor to the show uh, is Attorney John Scalia. He's been hanging out in Munich, Germany, but he still has his ticket to practice law in California. And he is going to talk about his experiences. And I mean like thousands of experiences, uh, both uh, questioning, interviewing, and cross-examining witnesses. Without further ado, Attorney John Scalia. Hi, this is John with the WorkComp International Report from Munich. This week, I'm going to begin with a quote from the bard, William Shakespeare, from his play, As You Like It. All the world's a stage, and all the men and women merely players. Well, what's that got to do with Brett Kavanaugh's testimony before the Senate subcommittee? Plenty, because testimony is performance art. It reminds me of a story I heard when I was listening to a sermon a long time ago. The preacher was talking about a Baptist, black Baptist church in which one Sunday a famous actor was in the congregation. The reading for that Sunday was from the Old Testament or the Hebrew Bible, Psalm 23, which is fairly famous. The minister, knowing that the trained actor was in the audience, asked him to give the first reading, and he did, and he did a wonderful job of it. In case you don't remember, you've probably heard the psalm at many funerals, It's quite poetic and quite emotional. It begins, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still water. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. It's a great psalm. So the actor gives a great rendition of the psalm. Afterwards, the minister asks an old man from the congregation to come back and come up and give another reading. The old man gets up there and reads in more or less of a monotone. The actor's version was met with polite applause, but after the old man finished, the congregation erupted in tumultuous applause. After the service, the actor goes up to the minister and he says, I have a question. He says, I'm a trained actor and I gave a great performance, and yet I was greeted with just polite applause. The old man barely changed his tone. And yet the congregation gave him a rousing ovation. Why? The minister looked at him and said, Well, the congregation knows that you know how to read it. But they know that the old man, he knows the meaning of it. Well, if we had a jury of our peers, that would be sufficient. In other words, our whole life and our actions would speak for themselves. But despite the mantra that we have a jury of our peers, we don't. We generally have a jury of strangers, and we're trying to convince them that our version of events is accurate and correct. And if you think that the instruction should simply be, tell the truth and that's that, well, think again. Taxpayers in Los Angeles finance finance instructions for the sheriff's department, at least, and I think the LAPD, too, as to how to testify. That's right. Those cops who get on the stand, they have been trained as to how to testify. Why? Because the DA knows that testimony is performance art. And the purpose is to convince the people who are listening that your version of events is accurate. You can say, well, John, shouldn't the instruction simply be tell the truth? (laughs) Well, go into philosophy 101 and ask about truth as objective or truth as subjective. And you're in for a lifelong study of philosophy and maybe a PhD. 
The point is that testimony is to persuade, to convince, to convince the people listening that your version is accurate. I spent over 40 years as a trial lawyer, and I did some quick math and figured that I've probably dealt with over 2,500 witnesses. Some of them were witnesses I presented. Some of them were witnesses I cross-examined. The ones I presented, I prepared for testimony. And the main thing I said about preparing them was answer the question and know more and keep your cool. I once had a client who was a world-renowned expert on the care and feeding of gibbons. He had a whole farm of them. And it was a rather contentious case. And while I was preparing with him, I said, look, I don't care, Alan, if the other side asks you if you're having sex with the gibbons. I want you to keep your cool. And that is what you need to do as a witness in order to convince people that your version of events is the accurate one and the one that should be believed. If you cannot keep your cool, the chances are the people listening to you, at least the ones who are being fair, are not going to believe you. Okay? So you have to keep you have to keep your cool. The other thing is, if you're a judge, you certainly should keep your cool. I heard the testimony of Kavanaugh described by one of the presenter or one of the news people on a Dateline London show that I watch on BBC with international correspondence. One of them simply said Kavanaugh came unhinged. Not a good description if you want to be a Supreme Court justice. Now, in all honesty, I've only seen short excerpts because I have no use for political theater. But apparently, he did lose his cool. And if that is the case, then I would say that alone should disqualify you. It's also a good indication as to why perhaps once in a while we should get judges who've actually done trial law. Anyway, that's The View from Munich this week. And once again, John, thank you for your valuable contributions. And if I'm not mistaken, you're coming on the show in the next show or two, middle of October. John's going to be here in studio. It's time for a musical break, but I am so looking forward to after the musical break because if, if I can help my, my, my protege, Robert, get in with the judges where he's making comments, listening uh, to the, uh, uh, the, the Senate hearings, and the judges are buying what he's saying— well, that's all part of my no, job. Not all of them. I just, you know, a few I, I try to check the just temperature. Just the ones you know? that you hang out with that you can't discuss. That's okay. It's not a problem. I just check the temperature as they're walking by, you yeah. can say. And, um, well, I, you know what? I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not going to go in any further about that, checking judges' temperatures. We'll be back after the musical break. How does it feel to be one of the beautiful people? Now that you know who you are. What do you want to be? And have you traveled very far? Far as the eye can see Baby, you're a rich man Baby, you're a rich man too You keep all your money in a big brown bag Inside a zoo What a thing to do How does it feel to be one of the beautiful i 
And the Cherry Blue Storms on Work Comp Matters. My name is Steve Appella, brought to you by Santa Monica Tickets, A1 Law, and ABC Rugs. Okay, now, I know, Robert, you didn't give all your 23 reasons why Dr. Ford was uh, lying, but you promised that we could get back onto Kavanaugh's testimony. Okay. And whether you it? thought that Kavanaugh's testimony was credible. I said he was sweating as as John Scalia, and I know all of you didn't hear the, the John Scalia segment, but the one of the main things that John says whenever he preps a witness to no matter what is said, no matter what you're accused of, to remain calm. Don't lose your cool. And Robert, even you will admit Kavanaugh lost his cool. Now, I've spoken with many people who said, well, if your family was being attacked, if you had death threats, you would lose your cool too. What did you think about Kavanaugh's testimony? Uh, I got to say, I'm probably one of those camp that thinks it was perhaps he lost his cool a little bit, but it's not not understandable. I think it's understandable. Uh, his wife is getting death threats. His, can- his kids, are their safety's at risk. Uh, you know, a reasonable person would be very upset. And so at least it's psychologically consistent. It wasn't the uh, the hot mess that was the, you know the earlier testimony. Now you now you can pick it apart because you got you got things that you could actually put down as uh, specific facts. Where were you? What did you do this? Kavanaugh gave you his calendar from like the 35 years ago. Yeah, look what's on that calendar. Right, and and I want to speak to what you said as far as you know him being upset because of the the allegations. He, several schools of thought on that. And there's no doubt he lost his cool. He clearly lost his well, cool. Please look, continue, Ted. But, but here's the thing. I, I think the, the Kavanaugh that we saw on the television interview, I think that's Kavanaugh. I think that's pure Kavanaugh. I think the display that he put on at, the, at his testimony in front of the Senate. On city, day five. Yeah, on day five. Day five. I think that was something that was catered specifically to Trump. I think he played to that singular audience. I think that's what he did. Well, what does that say if he gets nominated to the bench? What does he owe Trump? And by the way, in his opening speech, and Ted, I'll let you comment. Robert, I'll let you comment. In his opening speech, he said essentially uh, Democrats, Clinton, the left, the media, and, and the Clintons, you guys are going to be sorry for what you did. Well, 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 pretty much, and that, that's my concern, too, is that the it, fact it, that does now— Does that mean he's automatically—he's he's, he's tipping his hand to future issues that might come up? That That's what I think, because even shortly after that, when Grassley was talked to and he expressed his anger at the Democrats, he said, I can't wait to take over the, the Judiciary Committee. I will never forget what you did. And again, this whole thing has been politicized. You mean Graham? No, Grassley. Grassley yeah. is the chair. Yeah, he's current right. chair. You mean, well, he was talking about taking over some position or some role. I can't recall yeah. what it was. I guess I got that wrong. I think it was Graham saying but, but, you guys but never even, get the power. But even further to the point, if, if you look at it, let me tell you something that, that men do. When men are often accused of something, often justly so, we get mad. We deflect. That is how we deflect. We get angry. How dare you accuse me of this? But again, that's what we do. We deflect. We, we put on this self-righteous posture that often the person that has accused us, most often than not, they immediately back down. They retract because their position is, oh, my God, he's so they, I, I must be wrong. He couldn't have done this because if he had done it, he would be more contrite. He, he, he would be more apologetic. He would be almost demure. I said, but this guy's, oh, my God, he's angry. I must be wrong. That's what he did. Because, I, I, I got to disagree with you here, Ted. I agree in principle with mm-hmm. the with the psychological aspects of what you're saying. Mm-hmm. That is true. However, those individuals will not uh, let somebody inquire further. That type of reaction is meant to buffer people away and to oh, end the conversation. Oh, oh, but wait a here, minute. Kavanaugh sat no. down and said, I'll be here within an hour. But, that is inconsistent okay, with that but, type of but, defense but, mechanism. But here's, here's, here's my rebut to that. 
when he was pointing the axe, and I think it was Senator Durbin, said, would you agree in order to clear your name, would you agree that an FBI further investigation should be oh, done? I knew he wasn't going to answer he, that. He said, he, wait a minute. What he said is, he said, well, I'll do whatever the committee agrees to because mm-hmm. he knows it's Republican-led. But when mm-hmm. Durbin asked him again, what did he do? He sat back and he got quiet. Because let me tell you something. If I'm accused of something and I have an opportunity to have my name cleared, yeah, you dig up my, you dig up my dead grandmother if you want to. You dig whatever you no, need to see, to clear my name. I, this is where, again, I, I disagree. Remember, the goal here is not necessarily to prove these charges. I could just pick apart Dr. Ford's testimony and soon enough, soon will everyone else. That's not the when goal. Emotions go- that's correct. The goal is to delay. It doesn't matter. Hey, we have these frivolous charges. Don't you think we should have a delay and in, in, in investigate it? No, I don't. I think they're voting tomorrow. Well, no. Correct. They? That's what I'm. That's the point of Friday. the frivolous charges. Friday, Friday. 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 the latest. Yeah. And we all know that delay tactic is the end goal because they want to get to the midterms. They want to. They want to win the election. Because they wanna... the Republicans stole their choice. Okay, but that. that I get it. But that's past now. Okay. Right now we're dealing. For most I don't dads. think that's ever. I know. Be passed I know. If you're a Republican. <laughs> I get it. I yeah. get it. But right but now we got an open something. seat. We got to do something. But here's the thing, though, Robert. Let me tell you something. If I was in if I was in Kavanaugh's position, I would rather have my appointment to the Supreme Court be untainted. So you can take as long as you want to. No, the Democrats are just going to keep throwing new accusations. That's the point of the delay. No, as no. soon as you, I, I knew the moment we have a delay, you're going to get new accusations. You're going to move the goalposts. That's what they say. Well, the accusations, the point, but the accusations, continue the delay. But the accusations have already come out. There hasn't been anything further. The only thing that's come out recently is like the police report that came out with him either throwing a beer bottle or some or, ice, or, yeah. or some <laughs> ice or somebody. No, I've, I've heard I've heard two versions of that. Avenatti and, and, today supposedly has another witness. Oh, what oh who would have guessed it? They <laughs> okay. just keep coming in this guy yeah. this guy's a client man and, and then when the letter came out when he wrote um the place that they were him and some uh classmates were supposed to be renting we're going to be a bunch of drunkard punks and loud music and so forth and so and on pukers yeah right and pukers so there are things that are going to come out but weak, weak stomach <laughs> <laughs> you know i think this was lightweight this is a gentleman who had a college uh experience prior to this uh, pc culture but in the end he's graduating he graduated top of his class so obviously drinking he must have blacked out his way to the top of Yale so I'll take a double of whatever yeah, he, he has he okay? said that a lot whenever he because was... it doesn't it disproves you said the alcohol is meant to character assassinate him it's meant to say he's no. a drunk no. so he's dangerous drunk no. men rape women therefore he must be a rapist Robert. everything we say the is blackout true Robert, no Robert about. let me tell you something he could have simply said look did, did I indulge a lot when I was in Yale or in high school? Yeah, I did. I was underage. Did I drink? Yeah, I did. But but I categorically denied that this is what you did. I drink? Yeah. Often excess? Yes, I did. That would have been more plausible. That would have been he more credible. He did say that. He said, no, I no, drank. I like no. beer. I no. had a weak stomach. But he never admitted to the fact that he drank excessively. He denied that and vehemently. Then when that he turned did. it around. And yes, then, he did And it. then when he was asked if he drank excessively, what was his response? He deflected. Do like, you? Uh, uh, do you? Or I was at the top of my class. I went to yeah. Yale. I worked my Listen, butt up. Hold on a second. Not a problem hold, drinking. Hold, hold Obviously, on. he doesn't have a problem drinking. Obviously, Period. he, he never had does. It. Obviously, he does have a problem drinking. How? If he's never, if he's if he's varsity, he's doing sports. He's top of his class in Yale. Clearly, he has never had a, a something hold him back. Some oh, sort of third oh, substance. So you know, oh, so totally. you know nothing about Daryl Strawberry. No, that was a talented athlete. Okay, that's okay, not but, academics. But it, that's not a man me, who's graduating top of his still, class at Yale. It's still a skill set. It's still it's a skill different. set. No, because that's hand eye coordination no, versus no, someone me. who has the focus. But to I'm, what I'm compete. talking about, we're talking about a drug. In this case, he used drugs and alcohol that would potentially have impaired his performance. I don't care if it's academic or athletic. So again, if he drank to excess, that impaired his judgment. I don't so see it, how it, someone so could be effect. an excessive drinker and graduate top of their class at Yale. Those are two inconsistent ideas unless, and the person who is accused of it denies it. Actually, so I can't see how that so could be. So you don't be. know anything about functioning alcoholics? Okay. How functioning? How well do you have to function? How high functioning of an alcoholic would he have to be? This is unbelievable. This is not reasonable, okay? It's not reasonable to believe that. Just believe the judge he when he says, I had a weak stomach, I drank some booze, and by the way, I graduated top of my class, ended up being a Supreme Court nominee, so it must have done like a hundred things right that none of us have done. And it, better than I, if anyone's going to investigate him for anything, shouldn't it be some sort of uh, stimulant, something to make him so productive, right? How could one individual be so productive? Actually, I would just want him <laughs> investigated to determine if he's telling the truth or exactly. if he lied. 
You, you, you want to ask every individual about. detail of his life, and, and inqu- it's an inquisition. Is no, what only is. what he testified to. Well, can I ask Robert something? Robert, um, the w- we assume that the FBI report, which is just, I, you know, as I understand it, just a transcript of statements. But, it's a narrative, yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, a narrative. Uh, I understand that, that those documents have been delivered to the White House and that they are now in the hands of McConnell, okay, Senator McConnell. And I assume that they're going to be released either tomorrow or Friday, and then the vote will follow on Friday. Is there anything in those reports that do you think could possibly change your mind about this whole situation? I don't think anything could come out that would change Robert's mind. Well, boss, I, I could speak for myself. Thank you, though. <laughs> I was just giving uh, you my opinion. Go uh, ahead. Can, can my, anything change your mind? My, your opinion of my opinion. I love it. Uh, well... <laughs> Uh, Can anything I, come out that would change your mind? Of course. He, maybe he wrote an email that they have where he admits to such conduct. Maybe not specifically Miss Ford, but maybe somebody else. Listen, uh, anything could happen, right? At any moment, new evidence. I, I am, See, I know everyone here has drank the Kool-Aid in some respect, and, and they must drank see me the as the crazy Kool-Aid? Cra- I must be the crazy one. That's how it is, and everyone no. else is crazy, you know. No. You look like the crazy one. Uh, but I was looking at these facts, and let me tell you, if more facts came, guess what? It would change my opinion. It would be on those facts, right? I think someone told me the only way to get a doctor to change his opinion is new facts. I would have sworn that it was you. New information, yeah. and it was me, yes. So uh, that's the it only thing. Me. So that's what it would take, and it's new facts, okay? But based on the facts that I've seen, it's nothing but a delay tactic mixed with uh, trying to conflate uh, a character attack with the, uh, a specific allegation of a, a sexual uh, incident that even the friends that are claimed as support witnesses deny. I mean, if her own best friend doesn't believe the incident ever occurred, what what makes anybody she here just think said she didn't recall? She didn't say she didn't believe. Oh it. no, not just didn't recall the incident. Didn't recall ever seeing Judge Kavanaugh ever. What is interesting that I find around this roundtable, I admittedly drink far more than Robert because Robert hardly drinks. I'm known to have a beer once. Well, every, you have a beer every six once months, in, maybe every six months. Mm-hmm. Mike, would you say you drink more than once every six months? Yes. Uh, <laughs> that was an affirm. Yes. Ted, do you drink once every Absolutely. more than once every six months? Absolutely. All of us drinkers are taking the opposing position than you, who's defending someone. Because I'm looking at the drinks. facts, and you're looking at your own lives and saying, "Well, if I drink, it must okay. be true." We all drink, but right? Robert, I, oh, hold on, hold on. But hold not on. all of you graduated hold top of Yale Law. Wait a minute. Wait this a man is the exception. You're you're right. However, I drink daily, but I don't drink so much that I fall asleep on multiple occasions. It, that's his admitted testimony. Not that he passed out or not that he uh, blacked out, but he drank multiple occasions and fell asleep. Yeah, he's in college. He probably just ran out of energy. I think we've all been in college. I guess that I was drank after in, practicing for the track and lifting for weights, sure, right? This, yeah, for sure. This guy's energy probably crashed. You know, a couple of drinks and he's passed out on the couch, most likely. Okay. And well, I can understand how someone can see that and think, oh, this guy's passed out drunk. There's a bottle right next to him. No, nah, he's been up since 6.30. He's graduating top of his class. He's working out. This guy's a machine, okay? And I know that personally because I work and I work out after. And let me tell you, if you gave me one drink, one, and I've had it. You know, I still drink once in a while. If you I give know. me one, I get all loosey goosey, and you know, and my dad too was the same way. And That's he why drank every day. Before we start the show, I offer everybody, I offer everybody some booze except you. But I'm just I don't saying, want you falling asleep. At the you know table. what? I would just believe the judge at this point. Believe him. You know what I mean? Believe he the said, judge. Believe the judge, right? It was a hard concept that, that that a judge would have frivolous allegations thrown at him by the far left, which hates Trump and everything he does. Is that so hard to believe? Is that that much? That is easier to believe than these uh, Twilight Zone uh, but, allegations. But, but okay. But the, pro- the problem is the problem with everything that you just said, Robert. It's not a far left. It's a woman who says she was assaulted. It's no different than the allegation that came against Weinstein, Les Moonves. No. 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 no excuse me. Yes, it is because you keep talking about facts. There, there aren't any any facts here. There aren't. I know. Okay. No. There's no forensic evidence. There's a he said. She said, who recalls what, who didn't recall what, that, that, that's all there is. No, there are I facts, mean, Ted. No. I disagree. The no. facts are supporting Judge Kavanaugh. She claimed facts. No, no, because even, because even when, he, when, the, when Rachel Mitchell, who was a prosecutor from Arizona, when she started questioning Kavanaugh before the Republicans jumped in and took over, she started talking about his calendar. And she said, well, you know, it's interesting because this weekend that you're talking about, 
accurately supports what 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 Ford said. It happened that she this is the weekend she said that it happened. She did it's, uh, it's, it's on yes, she did. Oh. It's, it's on it's on it's on your calendar. I, it seems to support what she was saying. I forgot and, the most important psychological factor. You're just reminding me if I can uh, well I understand your calendar. Uh yes, there were some times where he would be in the DC area. It sounded more like they did a casting call for somebody in this general area meeting this age restrictions. And they just found the nuttiest person that they can convince. Uh and she went along with it. By the way, she lives in Palo Alto and she's in academia. Just, just you know, if wondering if you live, if you live in an echo chamber. But that's beside the, the, the other psychological factors that would indicate that she would be receptive to such a, a plot. But, but let's set it aside. Originally, in her written statement, I believe she said that she got a ride home from a friend, correct? Do you guys recall that? I'm not sure about I that. I know. think she's been consistent that she doesn't recall no, how no, she got No, home. no, no, no. I believe she really? originally testified, uh, the original statement included something about uh, leaving and getting a car ride from a friend. I then the statements that. from the friends came out that I don't recall such an incident. And guess what her testimony was? Then she didn't recall. That's all right. The old evolving testimony. Well, Robert, do you think that she cut this whole this thing out of whole claw? Well, I, I think that the... Uh, Scrubbing of the social media ahead of time, the amount of money she's received post uh, the uh, interview. Yeah, she's got about three quarters of a million bucks I heard on it was GoFundMe. Closer, closer to a million now, but either way, okay, okay. a substantial sum. Where she lives, the area where she works. Totally democratic, totally liberal. She's a hero in that area. Um, you know, I would have been interested in seeing a real FBI investigation. Get her Facebook and, and back uh, and her social media back on uh, online. I bet you you'd find a lot of... Uh, uh, alleged, uh, you know, it was just put this way, a lot of posts that would indicate that she would have a, a desire to, to she create got such allegations. devil's triangles and stuff like I, that? I just think, no, I think you'd see some political stuff where she pretty much is going to play by play A little Statue comments. of Liberty action, huh? I, I, I just feel like the, the, uh, the factors of deception here are overwhelming. Overwhelming, in my opinion. I totally agree, and, and I've got his testimony to back that up. Go I ahead. know you believe Judge Kavanaugh is being deceptive. I Absolutely. Believe, I believe he may have minimized and deflected, but I believe he was generally well, consistent he, in his emotional tone. If you and the proper make a range. material uh, uh, minimization, that to me is lying. I, I understand, and we may have different definitions as to that, and I think it's yes, totally off do. topic. Uh, nonetheless, you know, uh, aside from that, uh, I think Dr. Ford's testimony, you know, if you guys have any uh, concerns at home, you can feel free to email uh, Steve here, and he'll pass it along. I know he'll yes, plug the email right now. And you can tell me why I'm wrong, uh, right? Why why is, she can demand privacy on one hand, but make herself available only one time in front of the whole world, and for some reason that, can, to you, does, doesn't seem to raise a flag. that's an excellent way to end the show. Uh, WCExaminer at AOL.com, uh, 818-475-1437. Uh, tell us why Robert is wrong. <laughs> Go for it, okay? I could take it. I went to a public school. Absolutely, he um, could take uh, it. You know, I grew up uh, from humble means. You're not going to cut me down too hard, okay? <laughs> Just try to try to limit the personal attacks. Try to go with, with the facts here that I that I mentioned. Yes, stick, show me. Stick to the facts, right? Show me how uh, she can be. You know, uh, her uh, and read the quote about the hippocampus. It is so bad. If somebody reads that and doesn't think the person there is lying, uh, well, I got a bridge I'd like to sell you. Okay. That's all I can say. And if you think that, if you agree with me, that it really doesn't matter whether or not she's lying or uh, misremembers what happened, but it's whether or not you believe that Kavanaugh was telling the truth, whether or not at a job interview, because it is a job interview, that the man seemed credible. Is he someone that you would want to hire for your Supreme Court? You give me a call. My name is Steve Appel. We are out of time. And by the way, go Dodgers. I, of course, bleed uh, Dodger blue. And the Dodgers are in the playoffs. You got to believe. And it's been another hell of a show. Uh, This is four shows in a row where we've talked about Kavanaugh. And I didn't think we were going to do it so much. But again, no news. What can I tell you? Uh... My chief of staff, Dr. Mike Zima, keeping me in check and out of trouble at least 90% of the time. The best dressed man in California workers' compensation, Mr. Ted Durden. My protege, attorney Robert Ozeron, who is standing on his own. We won't call him a martyr, but everybody at the table disagrees with him. You contact me and tell me why he's right or wrong. We will get it on the air. 
from Uncle Studio, engineering the show, taking care of the technical difficulties. Mr. Scott Walton, back in Munich, Germany, Attorney John Scalia, and of course, all the good people that continue to and still uh, support and approve of this uh, valuable project, including but not limited to Leaf File and Jake Paris. My name is Steve Appel. We'll see you again next week for another edition of WorkCom Matters. 